Hey, this is Scott L. Miller here on Sam IT, and today we're going to talk about the relatively common question that I get asked: What is fake raid? So this one's a little bit weird, and the term is a little bit misleading. Fake raid is actually raid. It is not that the raid itself is fake; it's that you're being faked out in other ways. So that's a little bit weird, and it can be a misnomer. When we talk about RAID, we have two basic types of RAID, hardware RAID and software RAID, which we'll go into in another video in depth as to why you want one or the other, what the advantages and disadvantages are. But what we get with fake RAID is we get a device that's sold as being hardware RAID, but isn't. It's actually just hardware that doesn't do any RAID and you get sold software RAID that's hiding from you. This is why it's called fake RAID because the hardware is fake, not the RAID. It's basically you're being faked. Now the problem with fake raid, well there's two problems. One is that you're dealing with a vendor that's trying to trick you. This fundamentally means you're in a bad position. You don't wanna be dealing with that kind of vendor or that kind of product in production ever. You just, you, that's not a situation that you should ever let happen. Something's incredibly wrong with how you're interfacing with your equipment and your vendor. Even if you know it's fake raid, they are out there trying to fake you. That's just a bad relationship. The second thing is that given any situation where your vendor is trying to trick you in that way, let's be realistic, they have no incentive whatsoever to make that product work well to support it or to just do anything, right? You lose your data, too bad. It's it's caveat emptor here. This is really just the case of a vendor trying to take advantage of customers who haven't done their research or don't know the products uh, or don't know how to identify what it is. And in most cases, they get away with it. There's no really simple way to identify fake raid. You have to put a lot of effort into it. But pretty typically, if you're talking about what people call motherboard raid or uh, most raid that comes from Intel, unfortunately, or if it's any type of raid that doesn't have any, if they never list cache or CPU details, while none of those things guarantee that it's going to be fake raid, all of them basically guarantee it's going to be fake raid. There's many vendors who make it, often it's included in chipsets, and you'll hear all kinds of terms, motherboard raid, chipset raid, stuff like that. That's how you know that you at least need to look into it. Real RAID, enterprise class hardware RAID is generally $600 or more, well into the thousands. And we would never buy it without knowing how large, say, the cache is. And cache is hardware, you can't do that in software. Well, you can, but it wouldn't be, there's no way to legally give a spec for that as part of the hardware if it's not. So there are, we, when we look at uh, any RAID device to determine if it's fake RAID or not, one of the first things we look at is, does it have CPU specs? Does it have memory specs? Because if not, where is that hardware RAID running? Uh, and if it's even if it's not fake RAID, if you're not willing to list that stuff, you shouldn't be buying it anyway, because the hardware RAID's that bad. Uh, but the other way that we can tell is that if you're able to eliminate the drivers from fake RAID, uh, if, it's, if it's true hardware RAID, Nothing in software, whether it's drivers or, or other, has the possibility of what we call seeing through the array, because it can't. The array is always presented as a single disk um, at the hardware level. So software can never see past that, because it is a single disk to software. But software RAID uh, sees the individual disks, puts them into an array, and then presents it on still in software as a single disk onto the operating system. And so if our software driver fails, suddenly the operating system is able to see all of those disks individually. So a trick with uh, finding fake raid is to find a way to break the driver or to not install it or to attach the disks to another operating system and see if uh, it sees through the raid array or not. Now it doesn't guarantee anything if it doesn't see through because some fake RAID drivers are available on nearly every operating system and so often get loaded and you don't know it, making it still appear like hardware RAID, even more fake. But if they do ever see through it, it's guaranteed it can't be actual hardware. So there's a few tricks to this. Mostly you have to do online research before looking at any particular product and see whether or not uh, anyone has done the research and, and found a way to determine that it's fake RAID or determine that it's just so bad that it might as well be fake RAID. In most cases, if you have to ask the question, you don't want it regardless. So that kind of answers things for you, but there are cases where you need to know uh, and doing some research will help out a lot. If you go to the Mangolasi community, we do try to uh, record those whenever we find them because it does come up often and people do wanna know specific models. Uh, so if you do a search there on a specific model, there's a good chance it'll be found. Uh, if you don't know, 
ask and someone will probably do the research for you and help you determine uh, what it is that you're looking at. A common example here that's uh, an exclusion because in most cases, in fact, I only know of one case ever where desktop uh, motherboard RAID turned out to be physical, to be true hardware RAID. And that was the HP DX5150 desktops from the mid 2000s that ran on AMD hardware. For some reason, AMD put in hardware RAID. It only did RAID 0 and RAID 1, very limited, and it only allowed up to two drives, hence RAID 0 and RAID 1, but it worked, it was real hardware RAID. What ended up happening there was some companies and some pretty large ones started buying the DX5150s because of that really limited hardware RAID, put them in racks, put them in data centers, and sold them as fake servers. But that wasn't HP or AMD's fault or the RAID's fault. That was simply they made a desktop so good that most customers couldn't determine it was a desktop that they were getting and not a server, which so fake something just carried right along with the situation. But fake raid, completely avoid it. There's really no case where you want to, de to deploy that in production. The one exception is if you're doing video gaming at home and you want to have raid zero for faster video games and you just don't care that the data is really likely to be lost, whatever, go with fake raid, raid zero, it doesn't matter. It's just a cheesy way of doing software raid zero, mostly done because Windows software raid doesn't work very well. So, or is complicated, right? So it makes things easy. But in production, avoid fake raid completely because for one reason or another, it's either non-performant or highly risky and most often both. You just don't want to be in a situation where you're being faked about something so critical as your storage. Thanks for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe. Comments below. Have you been burned by fake raid? Have you had good luck with fake raid? Just because people have good luck, that doesn't mean that it's not risky. Remember, that's not how risk works. We'll cover that more. And if you don't understand risk, remember to check out my video and ask your mother to explain it. Uh, and if you want to sponsor our videos here, look for the link to Patreon below. I'm Scott L. Miller. Thanks for joining me.